Good morning, and welcome to Screen Junkies Universe. Uh, we have an entertainment show for you today here with Dan Merle, Danielle Radford, Joe Starr, myself, Roth Cornette. But first, we do want to acknowledge that there was another mass shooting just last night in Thousand Oaks, California, uh, very close to us. This is the biggest shooting since Florida. Um, there have been a rash of shootings and violence in the last few weeks, as we've touched on here. Um, we want to say that our thoughts are, of course, with the people that were impacted. We have a link in the description to help. There's a blood drive currently going on, and I know that a lot of times there's a you, you should donate throughout the year, but right now they actually do need it in Thousand Oaks. So if you happen to be in that area, the hospitals are asking people to donate blood today. Um, we have a link to that. We will continue to have links to help um, in any way possible. Uh, we do also want to say that there is a number to call there for veterans with PTSD. Um, we know a little bit about the shooter. Dan's going to talk about that. Yeah, just uh, that as details have come out, uh, one of the things that's emerged is that he was a, a veteran um, who suffered from PTSD. And that, you know, that sh that's not a justification or an excuse. Obviously, those actions are horrific, and nor should it serve to demonize millions of people who are struggling with PTSD. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this is a something that I'm personally very passionate about because I've seen it firsthand, which is that many of the veterans here in the U.S. who come back are not being cared for mm -hmm. properly. Um, they are in a system here that is just, frankly, overwhelmed mm -hmm. and unable to provide the services that a lot of veterans require. People fall through the cracks. People just don't get don't get the support they need for the service that they've provided. Uh, this is an ongoing problem. This isn't new. Um, this is a problem that stretches across every political party and ideology. This is something that both parties use to get applause at elections, but don't follow up on when mm -hmm. they take office. And, uh, you know, I've done everything that I can do personally by contacting my representation. I've never really gotten anything back from that, but I would just say that if if there is any way you can advocate for some kind of improvement or change in that system, please do so because there are a lot of people who served in the military who need help, and uh, there is, as Roth mentioned, uh, a a phone, a, number. a phone number in the description below. It's a veterans crisis line. If you are a veteran, if you are suffering. Um, Obviously, we'd encourage you to use that number, um, but also just our thoughts are with all the victims mm -hmm. in Thousand, Thousand Oaks. Oaks. Yeah. Um, and uh, there, there are, as with as with everything, there are so many sides to this issue that that should be addressed. That we could do a whole show on. We but, will. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Dan, mm -hmm. and and thank you for providing that number. I know Mara uh, is, is a vet. My brother is a yeah. vet. Um, uh, Danielle, your family's in the military. Um, I think we've all seen this, and I, I've I've seen vets go unsupported as well, um, in a number of really really acute ways. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm in terms of physical health, in terms of mental health. And again, our thoughts are 100% with the people, the victims in Thousand Oaks. Um, please do check out those links. We will continue to tweet as we have other ways to support. And we're very sad by this today. If you guys want to add anything, please feel free. Yeah, I think uh, to sort of even expand on that idea of, of mental health, you know, you add to the pool uh, survivors of of these situations are going to yeah, get lost in those same that's cracks. P that's PTSD, um, yeah. And uh, uh, we seem to just be at a gridlock where uh, some people yell for common sense gun control reform, and then some people insist, oh, well, it's a, actually just a mental health problem, and all of those just seem to be things they want to yell so they don't actually have to get any work done. Uh, so It's uh, both. Yeah. It's both, both, yeah. both of those, both of of those things. Things. pieces need addressing. Yeah. Yeah, Mental exactly. health so, so support ask, is almost non-existent in this country, and that's something yeah, so my I, family's I, been affected by. I would ask, you know, it, it happened in Thousand Oaks, uh, you know, from a couple weeks ago uh, to what happened in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, my hometown. Uh, I would just ask that people stay mad and vote, continue to vote and continue to march and continue to stay awake. I would actually ask that everybody start talking about the real things in an adult way and address the real issues in an adult way because yeah there is almost zero support for mental health in in this country 
at all. And um, that's one piece. Then there's veterans. It's very complicated. Uh, in any event, we are we are what we are. Danielle, did you wanna? Didn't wanna? No, I think we've pretty much covered all of it. It's um, yeah. I think that we just have to. It's really, really, really easy to get fatigued. Um, you know, the, the the numbers for I think this is I don't have the numbers in front of me, but this is you know like what somewhere in the three hundredth that this has happened here mm -hmm. this year. There was a, there is technically yeah. There so is it's technically yeah. speaking, almost one a day. Yeah. yeah. So it, it it can be very easy to get super fatigued and get super tired, but yeah, I. I you know, we got to start having these conversations every day. Mm -hmm. Not just when these things happen, except of course, it does sound like they're happening almost every day now, so. Um, yeah, I, to I completely agreed, and yet it is, Joe, you're right. It's a very complicated, multi-layered issue that needs a lot of different yeah. answers to it. Um, uh, an easy way if you want to reach out to your representatives, like Dan said, uh, is an app called ResistBot. Uh, it's any, you can just uh, text, use that app to, to text. It will send faxes to your representatives if this is something that you want to, because even beyond having conversations with each other, uh, nothing gets fixed until you yell at the people that represent you enough until they kind of get scared enough to fix it uh so I hope yeah. you have better luck than i did yeah so uh <laughs> tools like resist spot you know whatever you need to do to sort of get this conversation uh elevated yeah okay um thank you guys uh, again we are what we are we are an entertainment news show that's that's what we do so we want to address what's happening in the real world we want to acknowledge uh, that we are impacted by it as human beings um, sometimes peripherally sometimes personally by all of these different elements uh, certainly no one's been more impacted by these families in Thousand Oaks and I hope you're right Joe they get the support they need because mm -hmm. they are in trauma right now mm -hmm. and as are those survivors so we are going to move on to our stories of the day. We have a number of different stories. We have an update on Movie Pass. Uh, we are going to talk about the Breaking Bad movie. We'll start with Mowgli. Mm. Um, Netflix makes its play uh, in in terms of awards. Uh, we know that they've been doing that and they've been pushing um, quite a little bit. But the story of Mowgli is sort of an interesting one when we look at the inter when the in we look at the industry in total. So if you guys don't know about this, um, this is via THR. So Mowgli is Andy Serkis's uh, take on the Jungle Book. Um, it's his retelling of Rudyard Kipling's uh, The Jungle Book. It's a it's a darker retelling than what we saw from John Favreau out of Disney, which frankly just beat them to the gate and then was wildly successful. Mm -hmm. After that happened, Warner Brothers pushed the date of Mowgli's release back once and then twice, and then they sold. It to Netflix. Um, Netflix, and, and, and this has an amazing cast in addition to Andy Serkis, it has Christian Bale, Kate Blanchett, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Frida Pinto, Matthew Rees, Naomi Harris, uh, among others. So Netflix has now decided they were pretty determined to do day and date releases for their movies, but they're now making some adjustments when they think something has uh, awards of potential. So they're releasing a little bit early uh, Alfonso Cuaron's Roma in, theory mm -hmm. to, in theaters, Coen Brothers, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Suzanne Beer's Bird Box, um, and this. Yeah. Uh, Mowgli is going to come out in theaters uh, just a little bit before it is released on Netflix. It will be released on Netflix. Um, on the engagements will begin in theaters uh, on November 29th in Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and London before being released globally on Netflix on December the 7th. Mm. So I just want to talk about, because it really is to me, it feels like you see sort of the trajectory that studios are taking and how they're making release decisions. It, we could perceive the way we did with the Cloverfield film on Netflix that Paramount was dumping it, but I don't think that's what's happening here. I think that Warner Brothers didn't think it had a big play in theaters after The Jungle Book, but they still thought it was good and wanted to find it a home. Is, I think Netflix seems bullish about it if they're releasing it for awards contention. It's a big get for Netflix. Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. I, to me, it, it seemed like, it's, it actually, I, I perceived it a little closer to Cloverfield because Cloverfield, I was a movie that Paramount had and I, they looked at. And from the reporting that's gone on, they basically said, 
we're going to take what we can get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we don't really feel feel bullish about the the theatrical viability of this film, so we're going to take the payout. Also, they thought it wasn't good. And they didn't, they because didn't it's, think it was But good. it's not good. That's the only distinction here. I think Warner Brothers thought they weren't going to make money, but I do think they probably thought it was still good. Yeah, I, but I, I think it was... I, for me, it struck me still as a financial decision. Mm. I think everybody sort of looked at this and thought it was really odd. You had a Jungle Book movie that came out not too long ago. It was a huge hit. It was a huge critical hit. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a big audience hit. And so to do another one, I always kind of perceive this as Warner Brothers saying, like, we're going to hedge our bet here and take the money. I'm sure Netflix probably paid them a ridiculous amount of money for this film. And off it goes. But, you know, may, I, I feel like uh, maybe they, they, they're they looking at the movie. They're like, perhaps this could be a technical consideration, uh, mm-hmm. uh, special mm-hmm. effects. You know, Osc- Oscars are Oscars. Yeah. And I'm sure Netflix would love to have a, a statuette for one of their films in any category. Yeah. So they well, they I think that they're it's weird. They seem they seem determined to get that because in the way <clears> that HBO years ago was determined to to sort of prove their merit and prestige. And by the way, that prestige reputation served HBO very well it over did. the years. It still and, does, yeah. and it still continues to. So I understand where Netflix wants to cement that. It's just difficult because that's also being lost in a flood of a million other things that they're releasing. Danielle, what's your take? Um, yeah, no, I just agree with what, what, what you guys said. I This is one that I was looking forward to way before I was looking forward to the Jungle Book because it's like, or, um, because we know what that's going to look like. And this was sounded interesting and it was something new. And um, I'm I'm ready for this to win something. I'm ready for Circus to get 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 him that Oscar. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready for that. I think we're yeah. all. He's that, the he's the Leo of what he does. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean that would be the story behind a, a a technical Oscar for this movie was would be that that that's how it'd be framed is that this is Andy Circus's Oscar because this is top to bottom. Yeah, but I mean, unless he won Best Director, he still wouldn't get. Yeah, sure, but I think, I think the narrative is that you know they go Andy, and then he stands up in the audience and blows a kiss, and they're like, "Yeah, man," and then uh, the the mocap uh, uh, gorilla that's on stage accepting the award <laughs> lumbers off. Um, I, you know, I, I wish it had gone to theaters. This could have been this decade's deep impact in Armageddon. Damn it! Um, yeah. And uh, you know, we missed the opportunity. Hashtag Deep Impact was a better movie. Don't I think, add me. Uh, I agree. I agree. I, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, of course it was. Uh, of course it was. Um, well, you know, I really like Aerosmith in the 90s. No, it was Deep Impact. It's a better movie. Um, <laughs> I, I, the thing that really just stands out to me is... You just is, gollum a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we saw the inside yeah. of your brain for a That's second That's what just there. happened. It's it was been a long a, week. It was, we'll it get into it flash. at the end of the show. It's yeah. true. Yeah. We're all running out yeah. of fumes. Uh, there's nothing but overturned <laughs> desks and just flashes of green yeah. for me just, right now. Just, uh-oh. Oh, oh I'm no. Fine. Uh-oh. I'm fine. Uh-oh. Stop moving to defy. It's full. Um, oh. It's very It's very empty. So the thing that really stood out to me is um <laughs> I thought we were saying that for a few seconds. Welcome. You can't stop me when I riff, Billy. I, I, I can't I'm more well aware. Riff. He's foreshadowing. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's Stay doing. Tuned. Yeah. He's a storyteller, I'm Billy. Keeping him hooked. Stay tuned to segment four. Yeah. 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 Um keeping him hooked. I'm expanding that watch time. I think this really highlights uh what the Oscars have become, where it's like What's the bare minimum? I ha- it almost frames Oscar movies as it was in a theater for four days because we had to do it and no one saw it. Uh, and I, mm. I think those rules are going to continue to hurt the Oscars because more and more every year you see everything nominated framed as, oh, this thing that got released in like one city in Kansas and no one saw it. And I think that this just really reinforces that. Like just... Mm. The moment that rule goes away, then it becomes, hey, Mowgli, that big hit that came in on Netflix is now an Oscar contention, as opposed to, well, they had to do the ladybird minimum of releasing it in Sacramento for a week. Oh, don't you ladybird. I'm not making fun of ladybird, I'm making fun of the just... The rules, the dumb rules. I think on this one, though, the only thing that I would argue is that Mowgli probably does need to be seen in a theater if you can because of... It's it's probably largely sold on those visuals um, and the achievement there. Although again, Favreau not too shabby with his jungle book. I mean, this is all warm up for the Irishman. 
Sure. The Scorsese film that they yeah. put. So, like, this, yeah. this with all of this. How much money is yeah. in The Irishman like now? 100 it's million like a, dollars. It's over $100 million, it's, isn't it's it? It's a crazy amount of money. Yeah. And this is. I mean, you know, no, no, no slam to Roma and, and the other films, which I've heard Roma in particular great. is great. But for Netflix and also in my mind, this is all their test run to see how they're going to be able to push The Irishman, uh, I think, for next year's next, Os- year, next yeah. year's Oscars, yeah. because that is going to be their, I think, movie that they're like, this is our $50 million Oscar campaign for 15 nominations yeah. and like. That's their goal. Yeah, hopefully it's yeah. good. I hope so. Yeah. Where's I the, certainly where's hope the so. push for Pineheart, the Braveheart movie with Chris Pine? Yeah. Where's the push for that? You mean Outlaw King? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, there, it's funny because I think they were looking for a big push on Outlaw King, and then people saw Outlaw King. Yeah. Oh. And well, no, I I haven't seen it yet, and I, I I didn't hear it was bad, but I heard it was nowhere near as good as Hell or High Water. I heard he shows um, his Chris in that movie. That's the only <laughs> thing I've heard about that um, movie. That's, that's also the, the only thing, thing I've heard about. Everyone is way, talking about that movie. That is the only I heard thing. He I heard he shows his pine. I haven't heard about the pine, <laughs> and I'll tell you what. Color me interested. Um, <laughs> I was interested because of the because of the craftsmanship, you guys. Hey Dan. Yeah. Because of the filmmaking. Is that the how we're gonna determine who the most superior Chris is once and for all? We just have to wait <laughs> uh, everyone well, does their turn. Wait, wait, now I understand a tweet I saw the other day where he was talking about him versus Fassbender. Oh, oh there, there you go. If he's comparing himself to that twelve inch statue of an Oscar, <laughs> then I have to stop. I'm sorry. Does he I call it a pinus? <laughs> <laughs> Does he show his pinus in the movie? Think, if he's comparing himself to Fassbender, Weirdly, then, he calls then it it, that's wood. not that's an unfair category in the most superior Chris race. Mm. I feel like that's 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 an unfair. That's category. not something you can take. That's not you admissible can't control in that. Chris that's court. Inadmissible. Yeah, say it again, Billy. It's inadmissible in Chris court. Okay. 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 Thank you. That's inadmissible. God, you guys are a mess. Unless they all do like a magic mic reboot together. <laughs> yeah. And that way we just get them all in a line. <laughs> they, they don't show anything in the magic mic movies, though. Oh, no, just they do. Talent. Yeah, they just do. talent. Just talent. Yeah. <laughs> Raw dancing talent, that's Billy. A, that's inaccurate. Joe Man- Manganiello. Mm-hmm. I only saw the first one. Oh, well. The second one's better. The second one the second is about one is her better. pleasure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sure. I liked the first one. I did. The, too much furniture. They're no, two very different movies. They're very different <laughs> movies. And I, I think that everyone was wanting... Okay. What you got in the second one was what a lot of audiences were wanting in the first one. Yeah. However, I really like that first movie. It's a like totally what you would picture from a Steven Stoderbergh male stripping movie. It is the two-lane blacktop of male stripping <laughs> movies, and I like that dumb thing. Um, I get it. You guys, we're going to get off uh, the pines. <laughs> we're going to exit. Dan's so ashamed of us right now. He's just so disappointed. Well, he's right. I just, no, you're totally right. I just hate disappointing you like this. It's okay. I really do. <laughs> Did you see the outlaw So game? I'm going to prove that we are serious journalists, and I'm going to talk about how Movie Pass is being run by puppies. <laughs> <laughs> this is via the Virgin, Dan Merle. Um, I, I told, I, I forwarded this to Billy yesterday. Oh, this is the greatest forward. And the, the, the email just said, I'll stop forwarding you these stories when they stop being effing crazy. crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Is what I said. So uh, here we go. (laughs) So Movie Pass. Quick update on Movie Pass. They're insane and on fire (laughs) and uh, only comparable to one other company at the moment, which we will not talk about. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But but in an attempt to like. I don't know, like, a sh- like win over their remaining five subscribers who they've pissed off in every conceivable way with their shenanigans. There are just lawsuits. Helios and Matheson, their parent company, divorced from them because they didn't want to be associated. This is what they tried to do. They sent a picture. We have a picture of the puppy. They sent an email with a picture of a puppy um, to their subscriber base and said... Um, the message said, Woof, I'm Chloe, the director of marketing at Movie Pass. I'd like to explain why from time to time you have made out of a quote rough experience with us, but it turns out that I am a dog and I can't talk. What do I know? <laughs> what I do know is that I see these humans working like crazy to make Movie Pass better and better for you as fast as possible. They are so grateful for your membership and support while they work it out. We're listening, we're learning, we're changing, woof woof. <laughs> 
what are what you is doing? <laughs> what are you? I can't understand you. I'm a dog. Why are you reading this? This is crazy. <laughs> what what world are we living in? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, you've had a rough experience. <laughs> hey, investors, I'm sorry that you've had a rough time getting your rough turns back. <laughs> you guys laugh, but we're about a week away from Sarah Huckabee being replaced by. Max the Maga Mud. Yeah. just like, fake news! <laughs> the whole world is ready to a serial commercial. It's like, not a bad strategy, is what I'm saying. You guys can't make me, you guys can't make me believe that I am not asleep. <laughs> that I have not been asleep for a very long time. Marketing. You <laughs> cannot convince me that this is not some crazy fever dream. I pr- look, the staff that's left in the movie pass office is gathered around and they're like, what do we do? What do we do? And all of a sudden there's just nails down a chalkboard from this like young marketing <laughs> intern that's dressed like Quint for some reason. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. Oh, I earn a living. <laughs> We're finally doing it. <laughs> We're finally going with Chloe, the director of marketing. Cute dogs. Tommy cuts. By, the, by the way, if you're just scrolling past this video and you're not listening, JT, it's Movie Pass. Netflix is probably run by someone very illustrious. Oh, maybe no. maybe a higher level mammal, a dolphin, I Ted would think. Ted Sarandis is gonna <laughs> sue us, you guys. But uh, hey. 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 Do, do you wanna know, would you like to know if you're a Movie Pass <laughs> subscriber? The only wide release movie that you can go see today? Oh, yes. no, let's guess, let's guess. Okay, uh, it's, um, uh, I'm gonna guess that it's Mowgli. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll double down on Mogs. Uh Billy, what do you got? I'm gonna say Halloween. Mm. Okay, only wide release movie that you can see today. What's the one that Tiffany Haddish is in this week? Uh, nobody's, uh, nobody's Fool. Nobody's Fool. The answer is Venom. <laughs> if you're a movie pass subscriber today, you may only use your movie pass. And what now there are a lot of it they've become all indie releases. Now you can go see a bunch of like movies that are in 12 to 200 theaters, but right now uh Venom is the only wide release. Would you like to know the wide release movies that you can go see uh this entire weekend if you're a movie pass subscriber? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Wait, no. Tell I'm us, keep Chloe. playing the game because I'm disappointed because I wanted Tiffany to get <laughs> the boost. Okay, guess. Um you know what? Yeah, I'll go with Nobody's Fools. Sure. I'm just gonna go. It just is still Venom. It's still <laughs> like it's only, only Venom. Venom. It's they just keep trying to find a new way to trick you into Venom. It's not even Venom. There is no movie in wide release that you can go see this weekend if you're a Movie Pass subscriber. <laughs> which means you cannot get a pass into any movie as a Movie Pass subscriber. <laughs> you're gonna Except get an email for, that's like they're doing great as an indie mm. curation service because you can go see any movie that's in like. Two, one to like 400 theaters, but there's not one wide release film that you can go see this weekend. Whoa, well, sorry, my person had to take me for a walk and I forgot to add a movie to the movie You pass. don't want to see those movies, they've gone to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we've also made him sound like a weird clown. I know. I, I like that. I'm a that. dog. <laughs> Uh, hang on, you guys. Uh, movie Pass CEO Mitch Lowe is calling us and he says, I'm a kitty. <laughs> and you guys are kidding around about oh. movie pass. <laughs> but we're perfectly fine. So that just happened. <laughs> I love that Mitch Lowe has turned into a cat now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I um, think, uh, Dan, I mean, further they're just thoughts, trolling like, Are you at this still point? a subscriber? Yeah. Oh, God, no. Okay. No, they just keep no, sending you emails no, no, even no, after no. you've yeah. been subscribed. I really? wish that yes. I had stayed subscribed to their mailing list so I could have gotten this email. But no, I I, oh, no. I, I, am, I, I left Movie Pass. I am now a A-list Cinemia, cinem- yeah. whatever. It's the new uh, LinkedIn team or no. in your inbox. Yeah. Like, oh, my you're God. Gonna, like, Mitch Lowe's going to be asking to join his LinkedIn no, for but, years. But, but for real? Yeah. yeah. But that's going to be a legit thing yeah. <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yeah. Just an annual uh, or monthly uh, email from Chloe. Yeah, it's like it's it's really like gallows humor with movie pass at this point because I do feel bad for the humans yeah. that were because other than the director of marketing, I think there are some people that still work there. I hope Chloe, Chloe, <laughs> two words for you: golden parachute. Yeah. I hope you got one as the director of marketing. I don't know what kind yeah. of perks that comes with, but just get ready. 
Yeah. Guys, something we do. Oh, Joe had something. No, I. <laughs> just thinking of more dog puns. Oh, no, there you no go. keep them coming. Um, Couldn't retrieve any. There's something that we do want to see. This go is via the THR. Lab. Back to the. Lab. Damn it. I can't hear you when you do that. And then later people tell me about it, and I feel bad. I would say, <laughs> while Joe's humor often goes underappreciated, <laughs> folks at home, They're he does it. do a lot of it. For your enjoyment that yeah. we don't necessarily hear. There's a different show. And then, we get, <laughs> and then people get uh, people get yeah. angry at us for not appreciating you. I can't Joe. hear it. We appreciate you, Joe. No, I know. I, uh, I'm full on just trying to subliminal joke people at this point. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to catch them. We need a little Joe ninja joke graphic. Ninja joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you guys want to So Breaking Bad, the movie. What? This is via THR. Um, so this has been long kind of like gestating, talking about. So sources tell The Hollywood Reporter, according to The Hollywood Reporter, that Vince Gilligan, who is my hero, um, is working on a two-hour movie, and it remains unclear it will be if it will be released theatrically or made for television. Um, now, of course, everyone immediately was like, is Brian Cranston going to be in it? And Brian Cranston was like, I don't know. Am I going to be in it? <laughs> um, so he appeared on an episode of The Dan Patrick Show, which I just want to say to everyone that I, I don't know what that is. But here's what he said. Um, he confirmed the... <laughs> it's, a, it's a sports... <laughs> yeah, he's a sports, sports guy. Caster. Oh, is it a... Sp- it's it, a sports. It's a sports ball it's thing? It's a sports ball yeah. thing. Oh, that's why I don't know what it is. Why was Brian Cranston on a sports ball thing? Well, Kenson he does... Dan Patrick thing? does sort of cro- he's like crossover a, stuff. He's also... Is he the one that's like a big Die Hard fan and they announce like Die Hard news on his show sometimes? Yeah, he, he he's... Uh, I mean, he's known mainly through ESPN, but he also does a lot of pop culture stuff. Oh, okay. okay. Sports ball. Anyway, so Brian Cranston went to talk about sports ball, but then he also talked about Breaking <clears throat> Bell. Um, and he said, uh, uh, yes, there appears to be a movie version of Breaking Bad, but I honestly have not read the script. I have not gotten the script. I have not read the script. He's said that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a question of whether we'll even see Walter White in this mo- movie. Think about that one. Um, you guys, we're going to do like maybe a spoiler for the end of the Breaking Bad, just warning. Um, he went on to say it's a great story, and there's a lot of people who felt that they wanted to see more, some kind of completion to some of these storylines that were left open. And this idea, from what I told, get into, gets into at least a couple of the characters who were not completed as uh, far as their journey. I'm excited about it because Breaking Bad, it was the greatest professional period of my life. And I can't wait to see all those people again, even if I just come by to visit. Take now, that, Malcolm in the Middle. film said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. Screw you, Muni. Yeah. <laughs> but Munez. also, how do you say it? I don't know. Fair. Um, Slash film said, film said meanwhile, is, that they learned is. exclusively that this is going to follow the story of Jesse Pinkman. It'll be an Aaron Paul focused film. So if we did see Brian Cranston, uh, <laughs> then it would probably be in some kind of a flashback. And they said there was a very brief log line saying it was uh, tracking the escape of a kidnapped man and his quest for freedom. So. Uh, don't doubt, don't, here's the thing, don't you doubt Vince Gilligan, because everybody doubted him on Better Call Saul, and that is an amazing hour of television available to you each and every week. Thank you, sir, for creating that for us, and I believe in him, and if he wants to do it creatively, it's because he has a good, don't you look at me like that, Joe! (laughs) Don't you doubt Vince Gilligan! Don't you do it! Why are you on him? I'm mad too! No, don't you doubt him. It's going to be great. Better Call Saul is so um, good. I think the the lasting image Rain from Breaking parade. Bad was Jesse Pinkman in that car, tears streaming down his cheeks, and just just this guttural like scream yeah. of emotion coming out of him mm-hmm. after all of these things that have happened to him. And I don't... I don't know. I think I, I'm good. You don't nobody see life nobody thought stream. Saul would work. Nobody <coughs> thought Better Call Saul would work, and it is fantastic. Sure, but you know that's a character where I can go. I need to know more about you, and we did. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just. Uh, Wow, sorry. Dissenting opinion really just uh, ground the room to a halt. No, uh, <laughs> no, 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 I like that. Danielle, do you share Joe's opinion or do you have the right one? You better because we're friends. Um, I have an even worse one. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, I am the only person in the world who does not care about Breaking Bad. Ooh. Oh, it was me. I'm the one. Yeah. Oh! I tried. I didn't make it past season one, you guys. I'm half with you. I got to the episode where there's a fly in the thing, and then well, I was okay. like, I'm okay. done. That is universally acknowledged as 
one of the most divisive episodes of Breaking Bad. You guys don't like Which that is why I'm not going to bring up that it was directed by Ryan Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> that episode's uh, great. We all should have known what was going to happen <laughs> based on that episode because it is the most divisive episode of Breaking Bad of all time. I'm not saying I, I, I'm agreeing with Dan that it was divisive. I, I'm not saying it was bad. I don't think there is. I don't think Villigan's made a bad hour of television. Uh, I, I love the Fly episode. Um, some people like it, some people don't. It, it is literally the last Jedi of Breaking Bad episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it was either the show's finest hour or the point at which it was the worst. Osmiandis is the show's finest hour. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Actually, just the commercial where he reads the poem is probably the show's finest hour. That was pretty dope. Uh, which didn't Ryan Hudson also direct Osmiandis? No. 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 Or is that no. Michelle it was, McLaren? I believe it was Michelle McLaren. He did? Uh, he did? Oh, did Ryan Johnson direct it? Yeah, he, he directed hmm. The Fly and Osmiandis. Right. Okay, Ooh. so there you go. That's, there you go. Wow. It's par for the course. Um, <laughs> <Pete> Johnson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm I'm torn because I feel like I'm with Joe on the sense of like I love that last shot for Jesse of him just like I'm finally free, not just like physically free, but like free from all mm -hmm. of this garbage that my my last few years of my life have been. But at the same time, I felt like the one character who really didn't get what I the service that I wanted for him in that last half season particularly was Jesse mm -hmm. because the show was so as, as it had to be wrapped up in in resolving Walt and his family and Hank and like yeah. all of that stuff that I also came out of it saying like I really feel like Jesse got short shrift in the last mm -hmm. part of the show so I'm like really torn because I did like that last shot of him, but I did also feel like he was the one character that mm. sort of got lost in the shuffle. So yeah. I'm like, it's like because Jesse like was never Angel supposed to even be there. Jesse yeah. was supposed to die very early on in the series, but they realized he realized that he had a great relationship. So which I think the story of Breaking Bad is one of the, one of the most incredible stories of television. Period. First of all, mm -hmm. it was not a hit initially. Mm. Um, second of all, uh, Vince Gilligan had a very clear vision of the story he wanted to tell in terms of Walter White. But because television, especially episodic television, means that you can adjust um, the story as you realize, like you realize you have something great mm -hmm. in Aaron Paul and that dynamic. And so now he becomes a bigger part of the story. Same thing with Walter Goggins, Walton Goggins on um, Justified. Help me, Justified. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to die in that first episode, but no, he was a huge part of the show. So that, and then also because streaming came in, th pe that's what saved Breaking Bad because mm -hmm. people caught it on streaming, realized it was excellent, and then started tuning in, and the ratings increased. But by the way, they didn't increase to like, these are not you know CSI ratings. These are not even <laughs> Walking Dead ratings. It did very well critically, and it did very well for a cable show, but it wasn't like gangbusters. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, and I understand why you'd be Actually, Natalie and Brigley about this, but, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he's also, uh, that was, a, that was a deep cut there. Thanks, man. Uh, he's also now you just, you know, that was a cover, right? He's Sorry. All, <laughs> it was? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that either. Torn's a cover. Who do you even trust anymore? No uh, one. I was just going to say, uh, uh, Aaron Paul is now also just officially Todd from BoJack Horseman for me. Uh, and oh, it'll be really yeah. hard to mentally make the transition back to Jesse Pinkman from Todd. <laughs> like, That's fair. Odd, like, really, really difficult for me. Yeah. I mean, he, Aaron Paul of anyone, I think didn't want to let go of Breaking Bad. He knew mm. it was like the best moment of his career and the be probably one of the best characters he would ever play, if not the best. Second and I, best. I, a second now. No, you're right. Um, that's fair. Um, but he Paul's probably, he can do both, Joe. Yeah, I guess. He can do Paul from his, his, his potty. I guess. He can just do it on the phone. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Joe's really. <laughs> <laughs> we can have everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we if, can. Uh, we can have everything or nothing at all. Um, <coughs> is, our, oh, oh, <laughs> is that your transition Lord. into story number yeah, four? Yeah, it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm only one-fourth of the group up here. Really. <laughs> I'm a parent, too, in this situation normally. Not today so much. Um, and I want to apologize and get serious for a moment. So, uh, guys, you may have heard that some things have gone on with our former parent company, Defy Media, uh, and their physical locations and their brands recently. Um, 
we are not a part of Defy any longer. We are a part of Phantom, as you, I hope, know. Um, and we're fine. So uh, thank you for reaching out. If you have, that yes. is incredibly appreciated. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for watching us. I hope you're still watching us right now because we do need that watch time. Joe mentioned it. <laughs> um, also, just a quick update. Um, we're still physically located in the same space. So there may or may not be a, a slight break in the programming or slight shift in the programming over the next couple of weeks. But please do rest assured um, that we are still here. We're still fine. Um, the screen junkies are still very much here. Mm -hmm. And we are staying. Um, and we will continue programming if there is a break as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and we are absolutely all fine and still continuing to make the shows that we hope you like and love. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's the studio. The studio is what we're worried about. The, the physical yeah, we don't know physical how long space. we're physically going the to have access to this the, studio. The physical space is the concern, but we, the people, yeah. are still here and we are still going and we are still going to be bringing you the programming that you like, we hope. Yeah. Um, and that will continue as quickly as we possibly yeah can yeah, if there is a break. Full disclosure, we're looking right now at other studio spaces that we can rent out for the time being until we find a, a, a more permanent location, but probably won't affect any of our programming where we have some pre-tapes handy just in case we miss a day or two, but uh, cut us a little slack if it's not a live show that day because that means uh, we're just trying to move from one spot to the other, but we're not going anywhere. Yeah, we are not going anywhere. Um, and honestly, our thoughts are really with the folks yeah. over at, at Warp Sound Clever, Smosh. These are really good people. Yeah, that a lot we, of talented that people. Lot of talented a lot better. people behind the camera, in front of the camera, people that we worked with closely every day in the same space. And um, and that's who we're thinking about. So, uh, hey, if you've got a job, these are some great people looking for work. Yeah, um, and, and if you own a large media company, there's a lot of great channels out there right now that you, that you, know, that you can yeah. should look into getting because they're awesome and they're staffed by really cool, yeah. passionate, nice, which yeah. is nice to hear. Nice people. Mm -hmm. who, yeah, who doesn't want to smosh? Who doesn't want to clever? Exactly. Yeah. You and can a warp zone. Now. And a warp zone. I love those guys. Yeah. 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 Um, um, Someone in chat had a good idea. If for some reason we don't have an SJU that day, Go back to an old episode and watch, and let's get our, our, our watch time up oh, on thank some of those you. old episodes. That's a great idea. That's go, an, go hit the ones you missed. Thanks, thank chat. Thank you, chat. That's Check an awesome. Check out the classics. That's an awesome episode. That's an awesome episode. That's an awesome idea and way to support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We yeah. also might, we're investigating Skype JU yeah. um, <laughs> as an option. We really want to do a tour bus. Max and I want to figure out how we can do like one of those, like, <laughs> one of those like Hollywood tour buses where we're all just on the top deck. I Maybe would someday. love that. I'd be yeah. super into that. I hope that what this brings for all of us is just a weirder version of what you already have. I think that's... That's my hope. Can Just we sustain to, that? You know how, sure. like, in Ant Man, when you go like into the like quantum the quantum realm, yeah. you, uh, I don't know if this show can go subatomic. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't know what's on the other side, or if we'll ever get out of it. I think we can. I think it's Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I believe in us. I want to make dog puns with Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Let's so, go, Dan. <laughs> let's do it. I'm gonna be the Michael Douglas left yeah. up here, like. <laughs> They turn on their regulator. Scott. Scott. What's up, Tom? <laughs> so we're just gonna be on Scott. the bus. Rah. Rah. <laughs> we're going. We're going subatomic, and uh, but then we'll probably come back. Uh, no, we're coming back. We're all good. Everything's yeah, great. Um, you will have movie fight probably. We will have movie fights as later. Of right now, as of there right will be movie fights later today. There will be yeah. movie <laughs> fights later today. It's gonna be a great one. Um, it's gonna be a family movie fights. Yeah. And it's going to be wonderful. So we will see you there. Um, oh, can I say one more thing? Please. Tomorrow uh, is Fan Friday. So on the front page of the Screen Junkies YouTube channel, or Screen Junkies News, click that community tab. You'll see a post where you can leave your questions. Leave lots of questions because Monday is a holiday and we're not coming here. So we want to do tons of fan questions so we can do that Friday and Monday. So we need all your fan questions. Thank you, Billy Business. Thank you guys, seriously, for watching. Thank you for your support. It really, really, really means a lot to us. Um, we are very happy to be marching forward with our lives here as the Screen Junkies and with you and in the world. Oh, we should do the Deadpool story right now. Oh, we had a Deadpool story for you, but we'll do that tomorrow. We'll do it someday. We'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye.